All right, guys, so you're driving your ML and your brake light is on. And you may even have some lights over here. And the beeping just doesn't want to stop. So I'm going to show you today a couple of reasons why that could be happening. And we'll show you how to fix it. So stay right, tuned. Guys, so I've got uh, K25 out and between number let's see uh 30 and 87 are the two ports there we're gonna jump her and you can see oops, i've got that connected and you can hear down here the motor's running just fine see so what we're gonna do next we're gonna check those connections down there and see if those are working right. All right, I want to show you guys something. I took out the um, windshield wiper or windshield washer box. There is one screw here holding it in, and that goes right there. Okay, so that's the only screw you got to take out, and then when you pull out the washer box it's just two grommets so you just pull them out these motors you just kind of pop out to the side and pull them pull them straight out they're just a little clip for holding one of the cables same with this one but both of these motors i think are bad um, i'm going to test them but the real reason i brought you guys in here is because this this coolant tank was leaking from these old gaskets at the bottom of those motors and is dripping I already wiped it up, but it's dripping right here on the connector. And I believe that possibly we may have some corrosion in here, which could be causing our issue. So then we know the motor works. We've jumpered that and that's working just fine. Um, so it's either gonna be this module here, which you can see has a lot of stuff on it from the, the uh, dripping of the windshield washer box tank. And then it could be getting inside there, see these little clips. So we may have to pull this whole assembly out in order to get this out, but we'll see. Hopefully we'll just take a look at this, maybe clean up some contacts and it'll work, but uh, we'll see what happens. So let's get to working on that. All right guys, let me show you this next part. So what I did was, there's two pieces here. You got your plug, which is here, and it plugs in right there. And then you have kind of this piece that slides up and down. It locks it in. You literally have to pry this up pretty hard to get this to pop out. And then you can pull it and then you can unplug this part here. Okay. Um, I'll show you if I can plug it back in. I checked everything. Nothing is corroded. So I've kind of pushed that back in, lock that back into place. And then basically, if I'm doing this right, Kind of hard to do with one hand here. But basically, you're just gonna lock it back down like that. See that? That's pretty much it. The other thing I was che I'm checking is the ground wires. I'm just gonna clean those up with a wire brush. Put that back on too. I don't think that's my our issue, but I'm pretty sure from what I could tell based on the codes that I'm getting, it's it's that black box. And it's probably got. I don't know if I can remember if you can open this up I may have to go see I've got another one and see if I can open this up and see if we can figure out if that's got some corrosion on the inside because I think it might all right let's check let's go see what I got all right guys it just so happens I have another one of these here in my shop because I bought one of these for a motor a long time ago Anyways, I'm going to see if I could take it apart by just popping those pins out. I may see if I can just flip these little clips up. I don't know, that one looks like it might be locked in there, but let's see what I can do. Since it's kind of hard to film with one hand, I used an E6, okay, Torx, and we can see that. Oh, there you go. And I loosen these four screws. They look kind of long, like they would hold this in. So I'm just going to pop these out. And 
out and see what happens. I have a feeling there's like valves and stuff in here. So let me try to set you guys down here. Oh yeah. So all the valves are in there. And that's what they look like. I'll bring you guys up here. So I'm not exactly sure what each of them do, but I think that the electric, the magnets inside activate the different um, components to make a pulse. I I'm, no, I'm no genius on this stuff, but I'm thinking what we can do is just swap out this contraption for the one I've got on the car and see if it makes a difference. So let's do that. Okay, so I got the... I got the other one off. It wasn't that hard. Um, you can get your little ratchet in there and take all those four screws and pull it straight off. So here's the one I took off of this other unit that I'm pretty sure is a known good unit. And here is the one that I don't know for sure if it's bad, but I have a feeling it may be. And you can kind of see it does look like some corrosion down in there. Like, and this one is pretty clean or cleaner. So I kind of want to pop out one of these I believe these are like magnets. I'm not 100% sure, but just see if we can see anything in here. Maybe. Let's see if I can get one out. I don't know if these come out or not. They may not. They may be attached to the circuit board on the other side. I'm going to see if I can open this up, guys, and we'll take a look inside. All right, guys, here's what's inside an EBS valve module i want to call it i'm not 100 percent sure but i was able to get this off kind of broke a couple of the pieces there but i guess if you're putting it back together you probably want to glue it but i did find that there was a little moisture in here which i believe probably has gone down inside here and maybe has even gotten into some of the components i'm not sure so what i want to do still is i really kind of want to see if I can get one of these magnets out of here just to see. I don't want to damage it in case I need to put it back for some reason, but I have a feeling this one's no good. All right, guys, best I can tell, you cannot get these out. They were fastened, somehow glued to that board on the back. So let's take a look. Uh, we know what this one looks like, and these all look pretty clean. Let's go take a look at the other one. Oh, uh, I got my flashlight. Yeah, here we go. All right, let's go take a look at what this other one looks like now that I got it out of the car. All right, I definitely see some signs of corrosion in there, which would tell me that potentially um, that other one may not have been working correctly. So I'm gonna see if I can wipe that down, get rid of some of that white corrosion a little bit maybe. I don't know if that will make any difference. Then we'll put the new one on, reattach everything test it with the car on and see if our three lights and our brake light go out. Hey guys, one thing I wanted to uh, mention that I did not in, uh, we did not look at, uh, although I did switch it out, was the brake light switch, uh, which is underneath the brake pedal. Basically, it's in there when you're looking at it from under the car. You push this in, turn to the right, and you can pull it out. Reverse install, push it in this way, turn to the left. So it's actually, the you know, usually it's like righty tighty, lefty loosey. This one's actually righty loosey, lefty tighty. So these are about 10 bucks, 15 bucks. I would start with this. If your brake light, if your brake lights are not working, replace this first. Uh, typically when you get into the other three lights, this is not an issue uh, regard, in regards to that. So anyways, just thought I'd point that out. Let's get back into it. Here goes, moment of truth. I've got everything reconnected. Um, we're gonna try to start her up. Look at that, the brake light's out and the three lights are out. Isn't that amazing? So that's actually what it was. Um, hope that helps you guys. Um, let's shut her off here. And I didn't even have to do the three, the reset to the turn the wheel to the right, turn the wheel to the left. That's pretty darn amazing, if you ask me because I know a lot of people deal with this and it's actually a pretty easy fix. 
Uh, let me jump in here with the flashlight again. So again, test your K25, which I showed you guys earlier in the video, okay? Um, here we go, test that one. Make sure your motor is running and run it for a while because sometimes they will run and then they'll stop running as the brushes get a little warm when they're totally worn out. All right, and then go in there, take out those four screws like I showed you. And they're easy to get to, for the most, not easy to get to, but they're possible to get to. This one's a little hard. You don't have a lot of room here. I kind of pulled the whole thing. It's a little flexible. I pulled it over and I got my ratchet on there. So basically I took the E6 and I went in here, loosened that one, loosened that one. Loose, I went and I put my arm through the other side here between the radiator hose, got those four bolts out, replaced this. I did clean up those little, um, I believe they're valves in there and then plugged everything back together. I also cleaned up my ground wire here and uh, I believe this went bad though because of the, the uh, uh, power steering fluid, not power steering, sorry guys, getting late, windshield washer fluid leaking down right on top of this, which you'll, if you read a lot of posts, you'll hear about that. So instead of trying to take all that stuff apart, take out your headlight, take out your windshield washer tank, pop this off, get a used one off of eBay, good used one, look inside, make sure it's not corroded like mine was, put it on, and hopefully you'll have good luck like I did. And I hope that helps you guys. A few more things to wrap up on this one, but it's looking pretty good. My dad has the same car. He's got the three lights. I'm pretty sure he has the same issue, so I'm going to have to get another one of these modules for him. And I'll figure out what that thing's called, and I'll I'll put it in the description so everybody knows. Anyways, guys, um, about an hour and a half for me to do that job with videoing and just tinkering and then just doing a little investigation. So, again... My guess is these are all fine, right? It's these go bad because of corrosion and gets corrosion gets down inside the electrical box, which you can't really get to. Maybe I will in a later video open this up deeper. We'll get a little deeper in there and we'll see what kind of corrosion is built up on the inside due to that windshield washer fluid. So anyways, guys, hope that helps you. Um, I thought I was gonna have to redo the motor. Uh, the the, the uh, motor here, here's your brushes and you can see these are uh, they're pretty worn down on this one that one's like pretty much gone this one can still move a little bit but this one's gonna have to be replaced so I'm probably gonna rebuild this motor and this way I'll have a spare to just swap in when I need it one last thing guys here's the part number off of this module if you're needing to get one all right hope that helps you guys so we're scanning the uh, system to see what codes come up for our lights. And I'm using this iCar Soft i9 i980. So it takes a few minutes to scan everything. All right, and I'm looking for probably brake assist. Let's take a look here. So we got a C1025. I'm not sure what that is. We'll have to look it up. Um, I'm gonna clear that fault. Ooh, okay. And okay. Oh. All right, and then let's go escape. And then we're gonna go to electronic stability. Check that out. And I want to read the fault codes. So we have a bunch. Um, C1301. Solenoid valve would reduce pressure. Fault code not found. Okay, we're looking for these C codes. I believe this is ABS related. Brake light switch, which I've already uh, fixed. So we'll probably reset the code on that. Steering angle sensor. Uh, that could be bad. That's quite a, that's quite possible. We'll have to check on that. All right. So I'm going to go, okay, let's see, escape. And then we're going to clear the fault codes. And hit okay. Let's just see if any of these lights go out when we do that. Okay. It says completed. Might have to restart the car for that. 
Oh, and I had that brake light thing just beeped. All right, so let's go back here. Um, and now it's just beeping all the time. All right, so let's, um, I think this is nothing. So, all right, we're gonna get out of here. Um, let's restart the car. Sometimes you actually have to restart it. And sometimes even be doing it with the car off to reset those codes. Still have the codes, or still the lights and the codes. So sometimes it doesn't work when you do it this way. I've had some trouble with that, or I've had to like turn the car off, reset, turn the car back on. So we'll try it a couple different ways and see what happens. 